Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So if you saw my last video, you know that I did some, uh, I upcycled some old fence posts and some tin cans to make uh, plant propagation wall hangers. And it kind of got me thinking about, well, if you snipped off all of these plant uh, stems and you're getting new roots on them so you have new plants, what do you do with those plants once they're ready to be transplanted? And they seem like a great gift, uh, especially if you have basil or other herbs, so you could just give them for a housewarming gift or something, but you need something to put them in after you have gotten the roots started. So in today's video, I'm going to be making some little mini starter pots out of some old plastic grocery bags. One of the things I like about this project is that it just requires a few materials and a couple of tools. So here I have uh, five plastic grocery bags. You need two paper cups, a pair of scissors, some little binders or a couple of clothes pins, and then I've got some different colors of green here of plastic bags to make my design. I think this was an old uh, newspaper bag. Um, this is just an old shower curtain liner, so you can find plastic in a lot of different colors if you pay attention. Uh, I need, you need an iron, a glue gun with some glue, and then I've got a towel here to protect my ironing surface, some parchment paper, to, or some uh, brown packing paper to protect my towel, and then I've got a big piece of parchment paper uh, for the top layer when we're ready to iron. And then you also need just a small piece, little strip of parchment paper as well. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take the two paper cups and we're going to leave one of them as is and then we're going to cut the other one into a template. So you just need to take your scissors and what you want to end up with is the bottom cut off and then you're going to have the cup cut uh, out into a flat shape. So to do that, all you're going to do is cut down the seam, cut off this top lip, and then cut off the bottom so that you end up with a full cup and these two pieces. The next thing we're going to do is just prepare the plastic bags. So like I said, I have five grocery bags. They're all the same color. And I just want to flatten them out so that I can cut off the bottoms and the handles and then we'll use the main part of the bag to make the fabric for our pots. So I'm just gonna cut the handles off here. And for this project, I'm not worried about the print that's on the bag. If you're interested in how to get the print off, I did a whole video on different ways to prep plastic bags for crafting. So you can check that video out. I'll put the link in the comments. But uh, this is the part we're going to be working with. I'm just going to open it up and cut it down the seams. So that I end up with two big flat pieces. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just do that with all the other bags that I have. And we'll be ready to lay out our design. So I'm ready to start laying out my design and like I said I wasn't too worried about the print but I don't want it to show. So I'm going to put it in the middle of my two pieces. So I want to sort through and pull out the pieces that don't have print and the ones that do so that I can sandwich the ones with print in, on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two pieces of the plane on the bottom and then I'll put all of the printed pieces in the middle and three pieces of the plane on the top. 
So I've got my towel here and the packing paper. You don't necessarily need the towel. The reason I'm using it is because I want my fused piece to be a little bit, um, have, little, have a little more texture, I guess is what I'm gonna say. You could iron straight on a hard surface and then what you end up with is a flatter piece of plastic. Uh, but I want a little more texture to mine, so I'm, having, I'm ironing it on a softer surface. So that's why I have the towel here. I've got all my pieces of print here. Oops, I'm missing one there. So like I said, I have five bags, so I have ten layers of plastic here. Because I want a fairly thick piece when I'm done, so that it'll be sturdy enough to make my little starter pot for the plants. So there's my basic fabric, and now I want to take my colored pieces and add a little bit of uh, design to the piece and I'm going to do a very simple design. I'm just going to use all of my little green and I've got some black here too. I'm trying to use up some scraps of whoops scraps of green here. So I'm just going to cut little kind of confetti pieces and let them fall where they may. can cut different shapes. I've done some with circles. I did a kind of a leaf pattern on one of them. Uh, you could do stripes. But like I said, this is just a good way to use up some of your tiny little colored scraps. It is pretty staticky to work with this, but um, if you have a little cup of water, you can kind of move the pieces around and get rid of some of the static. So I wasn't totally in love with just my green, so I did have some scraps of yellow that I ended up just putting in here to give it a little bit more pop of color. And I think I'm going to leave it that way now. So. I'm ready for the tricky part, which is to add the parchment paper to the top here. And stuff is going to move around a little bit because it's staticky, so if you have a really intricate design that you don't want moving around, you got to be really careful with this. But basically, I'm just going to lay it on top. And you could use the packing paper for this step, but I like the parchment paper because you can see through it a little bit, so you can kind of see where your design is. So we're ready for the fun part. We're going to press all of the layers of plastic together with our iron. So I have my iron heating on a fairly low setting. I've just got it on three out of seven. You can play around with your own iron to see what temperature you want to use, but you, make, you want to make sure that you've got all of your plastic covered with the parchment paper so you're not getting any plastic on your iron. And then you're just going to start slowly at one end. You don't have to press very hard and just make a pass slowly over the paper. Move to the next section and just work sort of slowly. If you're not getting things to stick together well enough, you can go slower or turn your heat up. Uh, one thing, we are melting plastic, so you do want to do this in a well-ventilated area. And once you've gone over the whole piece, you can kind of check and see if everything is sticking down. Looks like I need to go over it one more time with maybe a little slower. And then we'll flip the piece over and do the same thing on the back. Probably going to need to go over the top again, just some of these pieces are a little bit loose, but we're going to flip it over just to give the back a little go.
So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to go at it the other direction. You can see it gets kind of crinkly and if you like that look you can leave it that way or you can, like I said, press it on a harder surface and you'll get a flatter look. So I'm going to flip it over one more time and do the same thing on the back. So now I've got one piece of fairly thick plastic to cut my uh, pieces out to make the little pots for my plants. So now I'm ready to go ahead and cut out my two template pieces. And I've found that with this uh, size of plastic fabric, I've been able to get about four little mini pots out. So depending on how you lay it out, you should be able to get three or four of the little um, starter pots made from it. So you're going to want the, your clips for this step because you don't want to use pins or anything. Uh, the only thing that I will mention is that and you might want to cut a different template if you can't remember to do this, but I'm going to cut along the top and the bottom edge, but then on the sides I want to leave about a half an inch extra. So I'm going to use my clips to attach this and just kind of hold it flat. And then I'll cut along the bottom curve here and I can just kind of move my clips around as I need to to hold my piece flat. But like I said, when I get to the end, I'm going to want to cut about a half an inch away from the edge. So I'm going to do that on both sides. Just move my clips to the other side here so I can keep cutting. my first piece and then I want to do the same thing for the for this uh, circular piece I want to cut about a quarter of an inch all around I want to make it about a quarter of an inch or half an inch bigger all the way around so I'm just going to cut a little piece off the corner here to make it easier to cut And then I can just hold this, this in place while I'm doing the cutting. So I've got my two pieces. And now I need to find my cup that's still in one piece. I'm going to still need my clips. And I've got my glue gun heating up over here. So I'm going to start by wrapping my piece around the cup and I can kind of butt this first piece up against the seam to help it hold straight. And then I'm going to use one of my clips to hold it on the bottom here, a little bit away from the end. And I'm going to wrap my piece around use a paper clip up here on this top part. Kind of slid off my line now, so let's line that back up. And I just want to wrap it around, keeping it pretty even with the bottom. And then I'm going to put a bead of hot glue just along the entire edge here and I'll press that in place. You do want to be a little bit careful with the hot glue because it does melt the plastic which is kind of what you want it to do but you don't want to melt all the way through obviously so hopefully my glue is ready to go here. I'm just going to put a 
bead all the way across and then wrap this piece around and hold it in place. You don't want to put so much glue on that you're getting it on the cup because you want to be able to get the cup out of there. So you might want to periodically just make sure that you can do that. There we go. Yep, I'm good. So you can see I've got kind of a loose piece of the plastic here and I want to go ahead and kind of seal that down. So I'm going to take my small piece of parchment paper and have that ready and I'm just going to put another bead right across the seam here of the hot glue. And then I'm going to use the parchment paper to press it flat. So you don't really want your fingers on there when it's super hot. It kind of helps to protect your fingers and smash everything down, get it smooth. And it's kind of melting the plastic and the glue together. Wait till it cools off. So now you can see that I've got a smoother seam here, and if I want to further kind of smooth out this glue, I can go ahead and just do that with the tip of my glue gun. But once again, I want to be a little bit careful because I don't want to melt all the way through. So you can just kind of work with it until you get it aesthetically the way you want it. But the parchment paper does help you to get the glue smoothed out. And then if you do still have a little bit of an edge, you can go back over that with the tip of your hot glue gun until you get it kind of smoothed out the way you like it. This next step is a little bit tricky just because you want to put glue all the way around the edge of this bottom and then you're going to put this on kind of centered as well as you can. But I'm going to push it up a little bit away from the cup so that I don't get glue on the cup itself. You want to work kind of quickly and you're, you don't want a lot of glue running down the sides but it's sort of unavoidable in some ways. glue all the way around the edge here and now I'm just going to try to center this pretty evenly around or evenly on there so I make sure that I have an edge on all sides and I'm going to kind of push my cup back in there for a minute just to so that I can press everything down but I do want to pull it back out before it gets stuck too tightly so I'll let that harden and then we'll finish up the bottom here so here's what the piece looks like so far. I've just got the bottom piece glued onto the edge. You can see I've got kind of bumpy pieces of glue, but that's not really a problem at this point. So I do want to use my cup still. I'm going to keep it in there for support. And I'm going to go ahead and just trim with my scissors, kind of snip every half inch or so into the cup. All right, so you can see I've got my little tabs here, and I'm just going to work at, on one or two tabs at a time, and I'm going to put some hot glue on and just press the tab up to the cup. So hopefully you can see this, but I've got the edge all the way glued around, but it is sort of rough and bumpy. So once again, I'm going to use a bead of hot glue and my parchment paper to sort of smooth out the glue and the plastic. So I want to add, just working a little bit at a time, I'm going to add some glue right to the edge. And then I'll take my parchment paper and pull it to press out the glue and hopefully smooth out the plastic as well. 
So I'll do that all the way around the bottom edge of my cup. And you can see how it smooths it out quite a bit. It's smoother and just has a nicer finish to it. So here I've got a completely loose piece, so I want to get plenty of glue on that. And again, I don't want to touch that yet, so I'm just going to flatten it out with my parchment paper. And once it cools down, I'll just move to the next section. Now here I've got a little bit of extra glue. You can either kind of melt it down or you can carefully trim it off. Whatever looks better to you. And again, I can go back and smooth out any edges that I don't like with my, the tip of my glue gun. For the final step, we're just going to finish off the top edge. So I want to take the cup out and I'm going to turn down the outside edge just to give it a little more structure and sturdiness. And I've turned mine down about a half an inch, I think. You want to try to get it as even as you can all the way around. Make sure you've got it kind of straight so that you're going to have an even, a level top. And then you're going to put the cup back in. And I'm just going to use the same process with my uh, parchment paper and my hot glue to glue down the edges. I need another piece of glue. All right, so I'm going to put the glue right along the seam here, or right along the edge. And then I'll just take my parchment paper and hold it tight. And you can see that holds the edge down nicely and it makes it a little more sturdy. So I'll just keep working all the way around until I get to the end and then I can smooth out the glue again if I want to with the tip of my glue gun. So once you've got the glue smoothed out the way you like, you've got it. One little finished plastic bag planter pot. So here are just another couple of examples of prints that I did. Like I said, I cut some circles out for uh, one print and I also did a leaf print here. And since we've used the paper cup to uh, mold these shapes, they are stackable, they're very lightweight, and if you've sealed everything properly, they shouldn't leak. So um, they make great little pots for gift giving and starting your own plants. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And I hope to see you back here soon in the lab.